videos, uh, Vivek Mohan and Krishna Chara. Krishna runs Tell Adventures and Vivek, as he says, he just got unemployed after serving Alfred and Houston for, I think, several years. Um, Vivek is from uh, Mumbai Angels and Krishna Chara is from Indian Indian Network. The idea today is uh, to learn, as I would call it, art of pitching. So whatever the board says outside, because ultimately the fact remains that is, you know good ventures get skipped out because we don't package and present it well. Um, I would say bad ventures get picked up because of packaging. So that does not happen. But the good ones certainly get uh, left out. But it's not just packaging. Uh, the idea here certainly is much deeper. And uh, that's why we have it, uh, two experts. So they will tell you what they, they will look for in an uh, entrepreneur. And uh, in terms of format, uh, I guess, you know, if any one of you are ready, you can actually make a pitch. And you could, uh, you know, get a feedback from uh, the experts here. Over Krishna. Yeah. Uh, we would have uh, Mr. Anil Joshi from Mumbai Angels joining in shortly. He is here around somewhere, finding way the way everyone was trying to find. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. So you know what we thought was uh, instead of uh, doing a. I just made it to the show new class. Thank you. Hey everyone. Hi. 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 This is Anil Joshi. Yeah? I was told today the workshop for pitching session. I, I thought let me give you a first lesson. You know, be on time. So if I can give it, you know, I have to go play it. Hey. Hey. So it was part of workshop. So what we thought was one idea was to uh, kind of take you through a ideal presentation and tell you. You know, don't cram a lot into it and 30 points, sans serif, and so on. So, the uh, I am assuming here that all that you know. I mean, you know what's out there on the web saying what's the best way to pitch to a VC and what your presentation should carry or not carry. So, what of the most of the uh, academic stuff, if I might say, you know, in terms of don't be verbose and keep it short and you know, talk about the competition and uh, you know, don't don't uh, load a lot into a slide. Most of it we thought we'd uh, pass. If there are some young people or people who think that uh, that's something that uh, we should go through, we'll go through that for 10-15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Instead, what we thought we should do is uh, instead of a workshop, keep it more like a clinic. So I'm sure uh, all of you are here because you are entrepreneurs or potential entrepreneurs. And uh, pitching is not something which is of general interest to you this afternoon. You want to pitch and raise capital. So we thought that why don't we do it this way? Because it's also slightly longish. Uh, maybe uh, you know, four, five teams or founders can come one by one and uh, if they have their pitch even if it's verbal or if it's uh, some kind of a presentation make that and then we kind of just look at that as a case study and just tell you what so is that something that works for you guys if you can uh, initially just start with some final points as yeah. well uh, yeah, we you know uh, put in, in yeah. this page as yes well. that will do so but that's going to be that's going to be a slide and we're going to run through that so after that, would you like every entrepreneur or in process of becoming entrepreneur? One entrepreneur. Everybody is a. I mean, uh, are everybody here is running a startup or a business? Yes. In process. And people who are not. Uh, okay. So I guess you're working somewhere and aspiring to be hopefully leaving your job soon and becoming an entrepreneur. Yes. <laughs> so would you be uh, the rest of you good? So there's a lot of uh, uh, you know people who already are running a uh, startup. Would you guys uh, and we can do it you know kind of in private. So if somebody wants, the cameras can be off. Would you guys have your own 
pitch deck that you would want to uh, you know kind of use, let's say, on him or us as uh, investors, right? And we can do so. I think that's better. That's more because you know I uh, we discussed this yesterday morning as to both of us were supposed to present, and we thought. You know, one more, I mean, we've done this for like what five, I've come here maybe five years back and done the same thing. I mean, after five years, I don't need to tell you, you know, write bigger forms and don't, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So it looks like, you know, we're in the same place. Instead, uh, this sounded better. So let's do that. Let's uh, maybe, uh, you know, we can just uh, sequence you guys as to, you know, who goes first and so on. Ten minutes. So, you know, it's not really, uh, so, you know, we can just, go through the, so what we won't count is really or this whole thing is not about is what is your specific business idea. Of course in the investor meeting that counts the most, right? What is it that you are trying to do? Here we say you are trying to do X and whoever comes to present is going to talk about his X, right? Which to us is not going to matter because we are not looking at the merits of X. We are looking at how do you communicate X, how do you deliver that? If there are five other people who are going to be talking about, let's say, you know, consumer mobile or uh, you know, or social networking for employees, if that if there are five different people who pitch it, they pitch it in a different way, and the investor might have a fancy for one specific, and why is that? So how could you also be delivering? Uh, yeah. 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 So let's just. Uh, This is basically, you know, to give you uh, some idea what could be done. This is specifically for startups, you know, not for a mature business, but people who are either at concept stage or are in process of raising fund. It could be single angel, angel group, or it could be proprietary money. So you have great idea, you have great concept, you know, but. You have limited resources in terms of either money or in terms of uh, uh, you know infrastructure or you can say human resource. And uh, to fuel everything, you need money. So we made some points, uh, which basically both of us would like to do uh, some live session. So we never wanted to do this, but since you want to have some flavor, we'll quickly run it for 10 minutes. In case you want us to dwell more time on any point, please tell us. We also have our uh, reaction member Vivek could be able to share his views on this uh, as an investor. So, first, what is the value proposition? You know, uh, what problem is being solved? So, let me share. You know, uh, I'm helping uh, a very big deep plan competition from US where I was assigned some 10 business plan and I had to rate them from 1 to 10. The very first question was, you know, what problem you are solving and what the solution and that had no maximum weightage. So, I chose for 10, you could do 80, you could do 100 but I think time is a factor and you get a 40. So, fourth business plan, you know, which I felt was very interesting but I felt interesting because I read the entire thing because I had to do justice, I had to give a 30 word recommendation to that guy so unless I do it. I can't recommend 30 words and the time you recommend you can't submit and for one application nines are hit up. So I had to read the entire thing. I landed up recommending it but the first thing, the problem what I read I couldn't understand what it is doing. The second thing was you know the solution was also very vague. So I thought I could skip it but the way it goes is that I had to read every crap. So the, there's a you know, factor you know no VC or no investor would be willing to spend time if he is not able to understand the problem or if he is you know, able to understand your concept. But it's very important, you know, you make it, you know, very simple, you know, which anybody can understand. I can share one more example, you know, uh, we came across a business plan which had actually global play. Uh, till time we invested, I think not a single guy understood what is doing. Okay, the fact of life, everybody liked they are to know they like the past and they felt that the guy can do something at usual level. They landed up investing one million dollars. But the fact of I think we never understood the problem because see techie is at the end of the day talk all technology jargon. So if you keep on talking, you know, all technical stuff, I think it's very difficult for investment to understand. Most of the time people on other side of the table have run their own business, they understand technology. 
but they get a flair more on financial side. So make it very simple. Uh, you need to have a very crisp and you know clear definition of your problem. But what you know, whether it's a product or service, please differentiate. Most of the time, IT companies get confused between whether it's a product or service. So unless until you define whether it's a product and service, it makes a uh, lot of difference. Uh, then business model, soft uh, qualitative factors, no technical jargons. At least first meeting. I am sure if somebody likes your business plan, they will bring experts who can go deep dive and understand what is technology, but not you know during your kitchen. Krishna, you want to add something? Actually, related to we said you know acronyms or uh, you know what are you talking about? I remember just a couple of weeks back and we were having this IAN uh, so one entrepreneur uh, he, and I think our time allotment is some 45 minutes now there is some area of B B and B and R or some, something, something and something but all the while he kept on saying that as an industry is great and there are opportunities and you know none of us understood what is that opportunity I mean what area is like also once you get started on that path he said like a two way problem the more you get ahead the more other people are like, you know, they, everybody sound, you know, doesn't want to look like an idiot saying, okay, excuse me, let's go five slides back. And what is this? So ultimately, it was some environmental safety and sustainability or something which is a technical word from a regulatory, if you're running a plant or something, there's a particular word. And you know, I mean, the, uh, the investors here would have no clue. And you don't know that, you know, half an hour has passed. And people are just hoping that this ends. <laughs> Definitely, you know, no investment was happening there. <laughs> it is very frustrating, you know, the guy on the other side, let's say you have your concept and for last 20 minutes you are trying to explain and we all are doing, you know, the thing is understanding. And after 20 minutes, you know, guy asks, you know, what do you do? So don't be under impression, you know, that uh, what you are trying to say is, is, you know, understood by people. Make it simple. Uh, I can give you many examples, one of the latest examples that I have developed from, you know, uh, enterprise solution for agriculture industry. I understand what is SAP, I understand what is ERP, I understand what is CRM. If you just say I have developed CRM or ERP for every industry, I will get connected. But if you explain me 20 slides and till 20th slide I don't know whether he is doing ERP or he is doing consultancy, then I think there is a problem. So, please be, you know, as simple as possible, especially people like me and Krishna. We don't understand, you know, up till 5 or 20th slide, what's happening. Vivek, you want to share something? Spot on. Uh, the second thing, you know, once you have identified what's the problem and what solution you have. Uh, example, you know, uh, data has realized that there is a gap, there is a problem, you know. There is a, there is a huge gap between 2 wheeler and 4 wheeler and they, they came up with a solution called Nano. And they also realize, you know, what is the opportunity. But if you don't define it properly, you know, don't segment it properly, it becomes difficult to market, you know, how big is the opportunity. So once you have done that, uh, please size the market, uh, not only at local but at uh, global level. What is the competitive landscape? Uh, what what differentiate you? Uh, what is, you know, your IP? What is your unique selling proposition? And are there any entry barriers? So if I give you example, uh, let's take example of Meru, you know, when they came in, actually there is, there is no entry barrier and uh, I was surprised that nobody came and, you know, didn't them, but you see now uh, they are getting impacted by by new caps, you know, new new generation gaps coming and you see what is Meru today and what is, you know, that cap tab is there. So uh, you need to have an entry barrier or you should be fast enough to execute so that, you know, you, you know, Chinese can come and, come and impact your business. Uh, if you have any queries, please feel free to uh, ask, otherwise I will be very fast. Can you achieve it? Uh, there are various factors uh, to make it happen. Uh, most of the startups in US, uh, especially they run to a size of couple of million dollars run by four, five, six guys. And uh, there is a difference, you know, because they bring in a lot of uh, energy, knowledge and uh, they bring in a lot of advisors on board. But, uh, but if you are alone and you lack, you know, some, uh, some, or there are some gaps, you understand technology, but you need a finance guy, you need a business development guy, 
we would like to see whether you know the team is is capable of delivering it or not. So one one particular deal which we dwelled for almost ten months, we couldn't close it because it was one man, one man show. So till time we brought in complementary skills with him, we couldn't close that deal. So while you are working on any concept or problem, please see that you have you know complementary skills with you. What kind of traction you have got so far? You know, what are your execution plans? And are you you know willing to? I talk to changes or are you flexible or not? I can share the story of in moving here uh, very briefly which we funded. I think this was our initial uh, few investments. Today it's upward of 1 million dollar, just raised 200 million. We funded half a million and uh, Naveen and team uh, had consumed half of their money in 6 month time and they realized that you know, though plan is working, they are getting traction, they are getting revenue. But they didn't see that you know uh, it scaling up the vision what they had and the six months they decided let's change they came they met investors and said you know we have idea number two because we see these are the problems in idea one uh, I think investors supported them and uh, they started working on plan six two three months four months they worked it again got you know started getting traction but again team realized that you know it's not a global play and they were I think almost uh, uh, you know, down with I think around 80, 80, 90 percent money was, was you know uh, spent very little money was there and then Naveen came again and spoke you know that I have idea number 3 and our investors started thinking you know we started idea 1 second is not working and the chap has started idea but, uh, but the good part was that uh, the team was you know uh, very fast in taking decisions they realize that things are not working, they need to keep working and today they are competing head on with Google, uh, I think both could be classified 1 and 2 and it's present in 55 countries, would be doing a revenue of I think close to 500 uh, million dollars and uh, I think sky is the limit for them. So don't be too married to your plans, see what is scalable and what you can achieve and be flexible. Yeah. Uh, one thing which I have heard at times is that uh, if you are willing to adapt, then they question that you are not convinced enough about uh, what you are pitching. No. Oh, no. Uh, I'll tell you. Okay. I understand you. Know, if you yourself not married to idea, should I fund you? Uh, but that is when you have not even tried. But when you have tried and you realize and you want to keep pumping good money after bad idea, I think that's not the. So I gave an example where guys worked for six months, they were getting traction, but it was not aligning with their vision. They changed, work again, it was scaling up. Again, I can give a very, very latest example. We funded a company which is in education space, and uh, uh, it's a very frugal model. He had a lot of money, he could have burned it and could have done anything, but I think uh, one of the best entrepreneurs we could have found, you know, our uh, 40 45 investments. And uh, he worked on idea number two, and uh, we connected it to a lot of guys, not only in India and abroad. Three months he worked, and he realized that he potentially have good traction on the same platform. While he was doing some, uh, uh, you know, uh, leadership program, he came across an idea and I don't know what changed, he started working on you know something else. He again worked on that two months specifically, travelled across country, spoke to all, I think uh, whole world and and actually is now working on something you know, path breaking uh, stuff. He, his focus was India when we funded, now the new avatar, the focus is US. So, it's not that he is not married but if you realize if it's not scalable, why you want to be lifestyle business? I don't think you need money then you can run your business also. <coughs> you have any comments here? Uh, thanks. It's very important. I'll give you a personal example. So, so while I'm an investor, I'm also a startup guy. So I'm investing in myself, I guess, also once in a while. Uh, so one idea that you know uh, one of my previous head of HR uh, for the company decided to do an HR play. You know, the guy has been doing HR for the past 20 years, he knows HR more than I do, for example. So, he ticked off a lot of the boxes you can see, you know, good domain, expertise, 
he had a good team with him. I knew all the guys. They've been together for a long time. They knew each other, liked each other, right? And he came in the initial pitch for an HR plan. It was a little bit like knocking out cough. Right? So uh, we challenged the guy. And because we challenged the guy, he actually got it. He went back and did a lot more research. And just last week he came back with a, what I thought was actually a brilliant spin on the same HR market. So I think, you know, you go, you get challenged, and you find that actually maybe you miss something. And then you go tweak it and you come with something new. Nothing wrong in that. You're still going to be HR, you're still going to do the same thing. But I think now he just defined his value prop a lot more clearly, made it more defensible, right? And showed how he was unique vis a vis competing against Coffee.com. I, I totally agree with that, that concept that yes, you have to be adaptable. And markets change, scenarios change, circumstances change. It is at the point of pitching. And I'm talking only at the point of pitching where if you're pitching today, it is an all a concept stage. Yes, going down the line, six months down the line, you find out, you adapt, you change, and that's how your business is evolved. So at that pitching point in time, if uh, somebody were to tell you, okay, okay, but this doesn't work, do this. As an entrepreneur, what should be, how should we look at it? So, I can only give, keep giving you an example. We have a company in cloud computing. Uh, the company is today present in 45 countries with uh, over 150 customers, paying customers. And uh, on average, they are getting uh, one or two country added to every uh, month. The idea is not to keep on adding countries. You know, if you keep on having this, probably one day you will have the entire world on your platform. But uh, what the fun if you know you are not able to use your resources, your dedicated resources for scalability. So as Vivek said, you are still in HR, but you know you may find you know different uh, to scale up. So as you move along, you need to see you know how you scale up, and you know is a value proposition for all stakeholders. You may you may get you know uh, high by saying you know my company is present in 40, 50 countries, but if these 50 countries are not paying you much, and you just concentrate on two countries and it takes you to billion dollar, I think you have your answer. So it's not that you change, but you have to align with market conditions. I think in this, what you have to understand is, all of this is not a science, it's an art. So here there is no, you know, I mean, no formulas. But you are, when you are working in an idea, any entrepreneur, if I work in an idea, if he's left his job, he's going to, it's a hypothesis, right? But if you really go back to academics, statistics, and look at hypothesis, hypothesis, a hypothesis is proved even when it comes false. So hypothesis doesn't have to be true. But while it's on, it's still a hypothesis. So you should look at your own post facto. You should look at your experiences. And So I think uh, what you are trying to maybe say is, if you walk in in front of investors and they say, but you know, why are you doing this? Why don't you do that? Now at that stage, you aren't supposed to say, oh, I'll do that. Then you come across as a simple term. I mean, you come across as somebody with no death no understanding, no you know, ability to, but the way you should look at it is even if let's say you were meeting me or you were here or you were with a friend or with your wife and you go through some experiences which ref let you reflect on your hypothesis, right? It's like saying I have this thing that you know if you go to let's say malls and if there's enough crowd, the consumption economy or whatever this economist called consumption is okay. And uh, nowadays, if you go to malls, uh, they aren't that full. You know, something like that. So, you know, for yourself, if I tell you that, but you know, why are you doing this? There are five other companies telling you, you know, doing this. Why don't you do that? But that, this is one more kind of input to you in your idea. He might say something else. He might, you yourself might go through something else. But at some stage, you'll say, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do something else. But not, if you're talking really about that 10 minutes in front of the investor, no. That, that was my you're, you're supposed to be changing ideas exactly. while uh, on your feet, right? Exactly. That, yeah. was, that was the question. Because yes, adaptive. You're, you're supposed, going to business you're supposed to say or you're not supposed to think that way, right? If you tell me right now that I should change my thoughts, the idea is I might, I need a much longer discussion or 
kind of you know convincing from you. Yeah, exactly. Just, just because you say that you know my idea is not worth doing, it doesn't make my idea. I think exactly. it's just your own experiences. Yeah, absolutely. If I give an example, Maruti 800, they actually failed out when it was at its peak. And the, whomever I met, you know, who would be called expert in this field, they said, what the hell they are doing, you know, they are killing a brand. And uh, such a strong brand, you know, where every Indian is aligning it. But just imagine, had they continued with it, uh, where they would have been today, you know, you see the right and at 20, you see, you know, the kind of vehicles which are coming, when big boys, you know, Merck are coming with, you know, smaller, and the BMW coming, and so, do you think they could have, you know, have adopted to the changing environment? So you need to visualize, you know, how you would be in five years' time. Is it helping you or not? And then you take a call. You know the same thing, what happens is, so this is, in those 10 minutes, no. In one day, no. It's like, you know, exactly. falling in love or getting out of it. it, it it's still a, it snaps, it's not a process, but it doesn't happen every morning and evening, I hope. You know, taking a thousand try. No, I just thought I'll add. But post factor, if you look at not pitching as entrepreneurs, you have, you know, it's a very dynamic thing. You're not supposed to question it every day, but every once in a while, it's a very dynamic thing. For example, I, uh, I landed in Bombay to start something in very advanced finance, something to do with derivatives, pricing, software, you know, something, you know what, after six, eight months, it was going nowhere. I got into something which was with, which came to be regarded as mobile web and telecom. I was no connection, but there was a story. I didn't say okay. I didn't see a report saying you know there's a sunrise in the. That doesn't work. It's through you know like experiences that you figure out that oh not this. So that correction will happen through some experience. Yeah. I can skip this. I think everybody understands. That is talking with his experience, but <laughs> there are some young kids. Uh, so, you know, you need to evaluate financial uh, feasibility. Uh, you need more, we can talk on this. But the idea is that you know, have a good revenue model. Key to a, you want this way to cover because there's nothing to do with workshop. Yeah. Uh, when you say a good revenue model is needed, Looking at the internet startups that have been going gung ho uh, and advertising like crazy, I have heard companies going in and spending 2-3 crores just in 6 months. Do you think they have uh, high returns and good revenue model or are we technically talking about heading towards the 2000s of the year? I don't know, people are getting the audience and the tangents from here. But yes, you could, I mean, so that's a different topic altogether. Where are we and Baba? I think that's, no, let's kind of, no, no, that's different, but I still address it. Uh, I think uh, what has happened is along the way in internet, in the internet company space, a number of users, number of active users and your engagement with users is what I would call today's quasi revenues. Uh, many investors are okay to say that if you can get a, let's say 20 million users, they are okay if there are no revenues. Because a lot of the very large successes, because these are new things, right? You cannot model them on steel and cement and you know so on, right? Those industries. So you have to say, okay, how do I, how, how is Facebook going to be monitored? Nobody knows. But as long as I'm sure their VCs tell them, don't worry about it. But make sure your number of, of course, for them now is the end game of, you know, if you have mostly everybody educated on earth with a mobile phone internet connection as a customer, then maybe, you know, but somebody like Twitter, saying that you have new broadcast media, if you have enough engagement from the consumer, so it's like saying that if you can take half an hour of the consumer's time every day, we'll figure it out. And, you know, from a VC angle, that's not very difficult because you're putting let's say 10 million out of a billion dollar fund and something which is so hot will actually f and then you know there's also a difference so you're really looking at as an but here maybe in India uh, you would really be doing a business where accumulating large number of users and no revenue it's just a different uh, I've seen models where people are discounting to the core that uh, they don't even earn money out of it 
Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's talking about e-commerce and so on. There's also supply, there's also demand supply at work, right? There's also promotions that really plays a part there. Right? You shouldn't complain if the entrepreneurial side is lucky at times, right? Why should you complain? But if I can add on this one, that this my two cents would have been again, you know, once a good bad thing with ages, you see a lot of the stuff. And I was in the valley when that bubble happened, right? So a bunch of my friends in 97, 98 told me, hey, come join us in a startup company. I said, man, our model is not coming, there's no cash, high balls, there's a quasi for, you know, what nonsense, right? Well, I was right, because in 01, 02, the bubble burst. But back to is about four of my friends out of six actually made upwards of $100 million each before the bubble burst too, right? I think what I'm trying to say is, do what's comfortable for you. Yeah. If you are the kind of guy who actually believes in a hard cash flow based business, then go with your gut, believe in it, and make that happen. But there are also a bunch of kids out there now who are doing some very funky stuff. And I say more power to them too. Because one good thing about this seed investing or VC is about ideas. It's not predominantly about cash flow. That's a key flex. But if you believe cash is important, get a cash-based business, they will love to fund you. I would like to fund you. All right? Different ways. I think, you know, what he's saying, impact 